happened to your ear? Lady Chai, whatever is the matter? I... I knew not where else to turn. Oh, this is all too much for my poor heart to bear alone. Alone? What of Master Chai? That is the very reason I summoned you. He's gone! What? What happened? It all began after the events at Mount Golg. With Lord Vorthry out of the way, we all agreed that a new leader must be chosen. And so you held an election? Yes. Well, sort of. Not a single person volunteered to stand, you see. After a lifetime of leisure, we free citizens have grown somewhat indolent. Readapting to the harsh realities of life is trying enough, but to take charge of a broken city as well. No one wanted such responsibility. Nevertheless, Yulmore could not well do without a leader, and so we decided that anyone and everyone should be considered a candidate. And after we cast our ballots and tallied the votes, the mayorship fell upon my dear husband. Well, given the manner in which he orchestrated the construction of the giant Talos, none could deny his leadership qualities. But even before then, he had proven himself at Daedalus Stoneworks, don't forget. He is more than qualified for the role. The perfect choice. Indeed. I told him as much when his victory was first announced. But perhaps I was too forceful in my attempt to encourage him. For shortly after that, he vanished without a word. <laughs> you believe he was so daunted by the burden of leadership that he felt compelled to flee? Please, Lady Chai, dry your eyes. Your husband does not strike me as the sort of man who would abandon his duty, much less his beloved wife. There has to be some other reason for his absence. You... you truly think so? What about you? What do you think has become of my husband? And there you have it, Lady Chai. You needn't worry. Master Chai loves you more than all the world, and he will return. Wherever he may have gone, rest assured we will find him. Thank you, my dear boy. You have set my mind at ease. I will trust in my husband and await his return.
Well, well, it's you again. Then I see you've invited your friends. Need them to fight your battles for you, do you? I, I, I didn't invite them, as it happens. Uh, though they are indeed my friends. Well, not only mine, but every true Ilmorans. They are the ones who awakened us to the truth, to Lord Forthree's villainy, the famous warriors of darkness. Who are they now? Yes, they are. It would be no exaggeration to call them our saviors. We owe much and more to their kindness, but we cannot depend on that kindness forever. To do so would be a little different from entrusting our affairs to Lord Vorthree. Nay, we must learn to stand on our own two feet. And I would have them present to witness my attempt. Hear, hear, Master Chai. Your sentiments are admirable. Yet admirable sentiments do not a nation make. In my capacity as advisor, I once strove to build a better Yulmore. Gave honest counsel to my superiors, drafted laws for the benefit of one and all. But in time, my values fell out of favor. There was no need for them in this paradise Vorthree was creating. And so I left my homeland behind. But you, Chai News, you were content to wallow in indolence under Vorthri's auspices. And so I cannot help but ask myself what manner of nation you intend to build. I... I can offer no simple answer to that question. This much I will say. It is my hope that Yulmore can become a nation which her citizens might freely choose to build together. A great many people, myself included, flocked to Yulmore seeking sanctuary. The alternative being to live in fear and die in pain. It seemed an easy choice. And sanctuary we found. As much food and drink as we could ever want. Secured at the cost of the surrounding villages. Little wonder the people gathered at our doorstep, begging to work among the bonded. The free were blind to it all, of course. Content to, as you say, wallow in indolence. In ignorance. Were I mayor, I would first take stock of the city's resources and see that they were assigned equitably. Our days of reckless consumption are behind us. The distinction between free and bonded died with Vorthree. The needs of rich and poor alike must be considered if our nation is to survive. To which end I would take steps to secure channels for supplies, rekindle relations with nearby settlements, who re-establish industry, reach out to neighboring nations, and the list goes on and on. But I am no ruler, nor even a politician. I am an entrepreneur. My expertise lie in planning and profit. I haven't the knowledge or experience to run a nation. Please, Rendon, will you not help me? Together, we could solve the city's problems. Build a Yulmore for the people. A Yulmore for the people?
I'd rather like the sound of that. But before I offer you my counsel, I would be certain of your ability to perform the duties of office. You would? You ask me to help you solve Yulmore's problems, but first I would see you solve one on your own. Accomplish that, and you will prove both to me and the people that you are a man worth following.
Right. Right then. Uh, form a line and make for your more. What's that noise? Wicked White! Run away, Talos! Call the guard! All of you! But of course I'm back. You didn't see. Dear, dearest, I, I can't. Oh, oh dear. Thank you. I'm sorry, my darling. It's just the sight of you filled me with such joy, I couldn't help myself. Oh, no, no, it, it's all right, dear. I, I should have just come out and said what it was I was intending, instead of entrusting the task to a hastily scribbled letter. Does that mean you'll do it? Well, I'm here, aren't I? I mean, not, not, not that my absence signified any unwillingness, you understand? Oh, no, naught could be further from the truth. I only left to enlist the aid of the former mayor's senior advisor. And now that I have it, I believe I am ready to take office.
Go on, dear. Thank you all for gathering here today. Uh, but before going any further, could I, could I ask the free citizens of Yulmore to look around? It is a sight none of us would ever have seen under Lord Forthree's rule. Not only do we stand in the familiar presence of those we once called the bonded, but today we welcome the peoples of the derelicts and Gate Town too. Today we welcome the warriors of darkness, come to bear witness to Yulmore's new beginning. As you know, an election was recently held, at the end of which I had the honor of being chosen to succeed Lord Vothry. You place great faith in me, and I promise to do my utmost to live up to your expectations, and I will seek always to carry out the duties of this office with integrity and fairness. Always, I say, but not forever. Let it be known that I do not intend to hold this post indefinitely. I consider myself but an acting mayor who will serve only for the interim, while Yulmore is reshaped according to a new set of values. No longer can we think of ourselves as divided, as the free and the bonded, citizens and non-citizens. The systems put in place by Lord Vorthry must be undone. But even as we tear down the old, we must give thought to the new, to what manner of nation Yulmore should become. Whatever the answer may be, it cannot be decided by one man alone. And so I propose that an open forum be held, that we might all discuss how best to strive towards a better future. However, there can be no talk of the morrow unless we first address the issues of today. Securing new sources of food, rebuilding relations with our neighbors, re-establishing industry. There is much and more that needs to be done. Too much for a mere man of business. And so I pledge instead to do everything in my power to ensure our city's security and stability while we all work together to see these problems solved. The road before us will not be easy, and I know full well how daunting the prospect of honest labor may seem to some of you. But we must accept the reality of our circumstances. We must move forward. This much we owe to ourselves and to the Brave heroes who risked their lives to bring back the night. Once we have shored up our city's foundations and regained some semblance of normality, let us reconvene to speak of the future. 
Until then, I humbly ask that you lend me and each other your strength. For Yulmo! Sorry to keep you waiting. I have carried out the treatment as per Master Matoya's instructions. It should slow the destabilization of their corporeal ether quite significantly. But tell me, how fair are friends in the first? So this Becklug's the first to lead an authority on Soulcraft, are they? Sounds promising. 
And Urianger's proffered solution of white orosite is rather ingenious now that I think of it. Well, while they press on with their preparations, you may rest assured we will continue to do our part here. Oh, you're back. And none the worse for wear, I see. Estinian! Oh, thank the gods! We've been worried sick. Did you lose your Link Pearl or something? The situation in Garlemald has become more complicated. I was making my escape from the capital when I ran into one of yours, Riol. He thought it best we come straight here. More complicated how? <laughs> Where to begin? After entering the Empire via Raz at Han, I went about my mission of investigating Black Rose. It was then, inside a provincial factory, that I encountered the one who styles himself Shadow Hunter, Gaius Baelsar. Our goals being apparently aligned, we joined forces and ventured on into the heart of the capital, to the very Imperial Palace itself. There, we found a man whom all assumed dead. But his soul lives on, and he has rested back his flesh. Xenos Ye Galvas. Nor did the surprises end there, for no sooner had we arrived than he murdered his sire in cold blood. The Emperor is dead. This sent Gaius into a rage, and he charged in, blade drawn.
all right. Peer into my past, did you? Well, I didn't quite relive the experience as you did, but I bore witness to it all. I'm still not sure what I think of this gift of yours, but no matter. Our confrontation was cut short when the Imperial Guard arrived. It was then that Xenos took his leave, citing boredom. <laughs> to think their research into the Echo could bear such fruit. Escaping death, jumping from one body to the next, and returning to his own after all this time. He is an Asian in all but name. It beggars belief, I. But no more than a hero traversing the rift between worlds. My concerns are far more prosaic. With the Emperor dead and the Crown Prince missing, the Empire is in disarray. Until order is restored, assuming it even possible, we needn't fear an Imperial reprisal. And for reasons of his own, Xenos took it upon himself to rid the world of Black Rose. Riol has already gone to apprise the Alliance leaders of these developments. We may leave the matter in their hands for now. Then perhaps we have seen the last of the fighting at Gimlet. Though, if it comes to civil war, I cannot help but fear for the provinces. Ah! Oh, I'd nearly forgotten to ask. What became of Gaius? Did he not escape with you? That he did, but we parted ways shortly after leaving Garlemald. He claimed another threat had arisen which demanded his attention. He didn't elaborate, but the absence of some device or other in the capital gave him reason to believe they're planning something. Lest you worry, I believe he has well and truly shed the Black Wolf's pelt. Conquest is no longer his objective. We may safely leave him to his own devices. Well, it's nice to have one less foe to worry about, even if we do have a mysterious new threat to look out for instead. Speaking of which, I'll see that Riol and Al Shinobi are made aware, though we still know next to nothing. It can't hurt to be vigilant. Well then, with Black Rose nipped in the bud, I believe I've fulfilled my part of the bargain. That's true, but with the Archon still slumbering away, we were hoping you might agree to stay with us for a little bit longer. Sorry, but I'm not inclined to extend my contract. Gaius isn't the only one with business to attend to. Thank you for your help then, Estinian. I see why Alphano admires you so. <laughs> Farewell, my friend. See that you don't make a habit of dozing off in battle. I suppose we should all be getting on then. As ever, we will see to the Archon's needs. In the meantime, why not get some rest? You've more than earned it. Go on.
They're here, Commander. And I, for one, am grateful that they are. Told you've been busy since our paths last crossed at the Gimlet Dark. Not that I understand half of it. When the science spoke of other worlds, I'd struggled to describe what I pictured. Mayhap things would seem clearer were I to hear the tale from your own lips. But I'm afraid the situation will not afford us that luxury. I trust you two require no introduction. We meet again, hero of Eorzea. Must we repeat this ridiculous display? I pose no threat to you, though what I come to warn you of very well might. Had he meant to do us harm, I hazard he would have kept to the shadows and brought more than two companions. We need not pretend to be the best of friends, but I hope we can put aside our differences for the present. As you are doubtless aware, Sir Estinian and I cooperated to rid the world of Black Rose in your absence. Our journey together took us as far as the Imperial Palace, where we witnessed Emperor Varus meet his death at Xenos' hand. Being the sole witnesses to this crime, and in no position to defend our innocence, we were then forced to flee, each pursuing his own avenue of escape. When we were later reunited, 
Estinian claimed to have encountered an unfamiliar kind of machina during his flight, but to me his description seemed anything but, and upon further investigation I found that I was right. The Empire is developing a new Ultima weapon. What, that elegant monstrosity, created to vanquish primals? with which you yourself once thought to conquer Eorzea. The same. In my foolishness, I sought to harness its power, and became the Asian's pawn in so doing. But you know as well as I how that tale ended. The weapon itself, excavated from beneath this very city, was destroyed ere we could fully unravel its secrets, and that should have been the end of it. But unlikely as it sounds, the Empire's efforts to recreate it have somehow borne fruit, primarily through secret research conducted by the Seventh Imperial Legion, it would seem. Wait, the Seventh was all but annihilated at Cartano, along with its legatus. Indeed, few survived. The Seventh, as it is now, has little in common with the Legion led by Vandanus and its leadership has changed hands several times since. Precisely how this project has continued despite such turmoil, and under whose auspices, remains a mystery. What we do know, however, is that a number of prototypes have been produced, and that one of them is on its way to Eorzea. We attempted to stop it, but it was all we could do to slow its progress, so we resolved instead to bring you warning. And right glad are we that you did, though it soundly dashed our hopes that tensions might ease at last. As it is, we've begun to strengthen our presence in the Gimlet Dark, and are assembling a force to meet the coming threat. A force with you in its vanguard, I hope. Before you say anything, I know full well you have pressing concerns of your own. Your comrades remain in peril, and I would not ask you to forsake them. But the fact remains that you and you alone have faced the Ultima Weapon and emerged victorious. We need you. And so, when the time comes, if your comrades can spare you, I bid you lend us your strength. I've assigned an officer to await your word. The Asian's downfall was to be the work of my remaining days. But it was my hand that kindled these flames, and I cannot allow them to spread any further. I will do what I must to see this mistake consigned to history once and for all. Even if it means begging your aid. The fates will enjoy the irony, even as I endure the ignominy. I too shall make for the border and offer my skills, meager though they seem in such company. Mayhap we shall meet there anon. Though we can ill afford to ignore the coming of a new Ultima weapon, our friend's plight grows ever more precarious, and none save you can join them in the first. I only hope you are not forced to make a choice.
Now that we are all here, what news from the source? A new Ultima weapon? We must count ourselves lucky that Gaius has pledged his assistance. While this is indeed a worrying development, I think the state of the Empire as a whole greater grounds for concern. With the Emperor slain and Xenos returned, it is impossible to predict how matters will unfold in Garlemald. The Ultima weapon may be but the first of many unpleasant surprises. The situation beareth closer observation, of that there is no doubt, and doth compound our need to return unto the Source. Then let us address that issue. Our long search for a means to see you safely home may well be nearing its conclusion. Thanks in large part to Urianje and Beklug's invaluable insight, we have succeeded in fashioning a vessel for the journey. We set out to create a crystalline container retaining the more useful properties of white aurasite, but without its regrettable limitations. And, after a good deal of trial and error, we made one. An arc for soul and mind both that will allow your incorporeal self in its entirety to be ferried between worlds. A spirit vessel, if you will. However... However? Though the vessel is possessed of the requisite qualities to hold mind and memory, it wanteth yet for a means to receive of them. For that, we must needs imbue it with the Exarch's innate gift. A gift that lives on only through the blood of the Allegan Emperors, which certainly does not flow within Aurasite or any other crystal. Just so, milady. The blood serveth as a conduit of sorts. In its absence, memory cannot pass from mind unto mind, nor from flesh unto crystal. That being the case, we must either alter the process of inheritance so as to require no such thing, or determine a means by which my blood may permeate the vessel. I am hopeful that the records found within this tower will yield the knowledge we require to pursue one or the other of these avenues. As well you should be. The Allegan's body of etherological research is extraordinary. I can scarce believe it the work of ages past. But its underlying principles are not so very different from those of my own field of study. Given time, we will find the answers we seek. I know that you can ill afford to wait, and it pains me that I must ask you to do so. I can only reaffirm my promise to you that a solution will be found. Whatever it takes, I will see you safely home. My apologies. I do hope you haven't come to tell us that mortal peril fast approaches. No. I had hoped to speak with the Warrior of Darkness. But there is no need to cut short your meeting on my account. I will be waiting outside. Why not speak in here? She knows I don't mind. Unless... she didn't want to. Perhaps I might accompany you. Though I am woefully ill-qualified to assist in the Exarch's research, I may yet be of some use to Lena.